Welcome back everyone and thanks for joining me again this week. Today I want to talk about execution plan reuse and what causes SQL Server to not reuse an execution plan. So if you've been watching along for the past few episodes, I just wrapped up a series on execution plans and as part of that series I discussed how generating an execution plan is actually rather costly. If you're on a pretty busy SQL Server with lots of queries running all the time, uh, you want to avoid having SQL Server generate a new plan for every single query that it runs. Ideally, if it's already ran a query in the past, uh, if that execution plan was saved in the plan cache, you want SQL Server to be able to reuse that plan. Now here's the tricky part. There's lots of peculiarities about how SQL Server decides to reuse or not reuse an execution plan. So today I want to talk about the things that will actually prevent SQL Server from reusing an execution plan if it exists in the plan cache. So to view statistics about queries that are in the plan cache, like what they are and how many times they've been executed, we can use this DMV called DM exec query stats. And if we cross apply it with these uh, data management functions, we'll see we get some results on all of the different execution plans, um, how many times they've been executed and so on and so forth, right? And if we scroll over to the right, we'll see the different query techs and their query plans. If you're interested in this query, check out the link in the description below to my blog post, which will have the query in a copy paste format so you don't have to worry about typing it all out. So we're gonna use this query all throughout today's video to basically check what's in the, in the execution plan cache and whether new things are being added to it or whether SQL Server is able to reuse a plan. And in between each run of this DMV query, we're actually gonna run dbcc free proc cache. And you don't wanna run that on a production system, but what it does is actually it clears out all the execution plans that are, that are in SQL Server's execution plan cache. So it's perfect if we wanna see what's getting added to the cache, but not really good if you run it in a production environment where now SQL Server has to generate new query plans for every single query that's submitted. And so the first thing I wanna discuss that prevents SQL Server from being able to reuse a cached execution plan is differences in white space between your queries. If we take a look at this example, uh, you'll see I have two queries here, right? Select top 100 display name from users. And then I have the same exact query with the only difference is that there's some extra space characters between my from and my table name. And if I go ahead and run these queries and I'm gonna run the dbcc free proc cache right before just to make sure that we're starting fresh, right? Those queries will run. And then if we go ahead and run our DMV query to see what's in the cache, we'll see we have two plans in the cache. Uh, this may not be what you expect because uh, even though we see these two queries as being exactly the same, except for the difference in white space, SQL Server actually views them totally differently. If we scroll over to the right to see the query text itself, we'll see that here we go, right? Because there's this difference in white space, we got two instances of that query in the plan cache uh, with two execution plans cached, even though in this case, if we were to open up these execution plans, they'd actually be exactly the same. So that's important to know because if you are rerunning your query, especially if you are troubleshooting a query that someone else sent you and you wanna see if it's getting pulled from cache or not, you need to be sure to run the query exactly the same way. And while in this example, right, I added extra white space between the from and the table name, if all you do is select an extra space character at the end of your query or at the beginning of your query, right, if you're the kind of person who likes to click and drag and highlight your queries before running them, each time you do that, if you don't highlight exactly the same amount of spaces and lines, you will get a new plan and SQL Server won't be able to reuse one from the cache. So be aware of that, be very careful. It's a common mistake I see all the time. All right, so the second thing that'll prevent SQL Server from reusing a plan from the execution plan cache is letter casing. So if we look at this example, what I have is these two queries that are exactly the same, except that the select and the from keywords are uppercase in the first version of the query and lowercase in the second version of the query. To you and me, we know that these two queries are gonna return exactly the same results, but in the eyes of SQL Server, they are two different queries and SQL Server won't be able to reuse a plan. So if we go ahead and run these queries with dbcc free proc cache first, and then we run our DMV query below that, we should see, right, and there's other things going on in the server, so there may be a few other plans, but we will see here our select top 100 display name from users 
plan. And then here's another entry right here with our lowercase version of the select and from keywords. So once again, it's just you need to be very particular about how you write your queries, because if there are any differences in case uh, of the letters, right, you will get no plan reuse. All right, we're going to start going a little quicker through these because the setup of all these queries is exactly the same. So I feel like we can, uh, I don't have to explain it as much every single time. This next example will prevent cache plans from being reused if you have comments in your query that don't match exactly. So well, once again, let's scroll down here and we have these two queries, one with the comment, one without. If we go ahead and run that, we clear the cache, we run our two queries and we go check that out. We will see. Oh my goodness, lots of plans in here. Busy server, but the key thing to look for is our two select top 100 queries. We have them right here and they are getting uh, different entries in the execution plan cache because of that additional comment. All right, moving right along. Another thing that'll prevent SQL Server from reusing a cache plan is if you don't uh, write like the schema names in front of your table. So here, right, we have from DBO users, and then we just have from users plainly like that. Uh, the problem we have here is that when we run this, right, and I'll, I'll prove to you, There we go, there we have our two plans. Now the reason this happens is because if your database has multiple tables with the same name and different schemas, and you leave that schema name off of your table, SQL Server is gonna execute it in default to whatever uh, the current user uh, logged into the database is. And so for me, it's DBO, but it won't, it can't necessarily know if it should be DBO every time or it's some other schema ABC. So it won't be able to reuse that plan. All right, next up are set options. Depending on how you connect to your SQL Server, whether it's from SQL Server Management Studio or from some other application, right? There's all these set configurations options uh, that you can specify something like set ANSI padding on versus set ANSI padding off. Right? And if, if you have two queries that run using different set options, even though the query text of these two queries is exactly the same, that will actually prevent SQL Server from being able to reuse your plan. And once again, let's check this out. We'll see, here we go. Here we have our two plans, exactly the same queries, right? This time they are perfectly the same uh, except that they were ran using different set options. And so SQL Server can't reuse the execution plan. All right, for this last example, I wanna actually show you some different kind of behavior of when SQL Server can reuse a plan from cache when your query undergoes simple parameterization. So in this example, we have these two queries, right? Select display name from users where ID equals, and then the only difference is the value of three versus four. If we run these queries, we'll see that what happens, right, even though we get different users, we're passing different values in, we'll actually see that both of these got just one plan and here it is, right? Here's our select display name from users, uh, but you see it got parameterized. If I actually show you the rest of this query here, we could see the simple parameterization uh, took our value and it was able to convert it into a parameter and SQL Server defined it as a tiny int parameter. So in this particular case, even though the literal values we passed in to our ID predicate, um, is SQL Server was able to reuse the plan. But of course, this is a video about not being able to reuse plans from the execution plan cache. So this doesn't always work. For example, if we go ahead and change that parameter here to uh, 256, right? So before we had three, before we had four, and now we change that value to something that is bigger than a tiny int, right? Because tiny ints only go up to 255. Um, we don't actually have any users returned for that value, but if once again, we take a look at the execution plan stats, we keep getting more and more values in here, but we should be able to see our two parameterized queries here towards the bottom. And even though both of these queries get parameterized the same exact way with that, you know, at one parameter after the ID, because we submitted a value that was now larger than our originally declared tiny int, SQL Server had to store a new plan in the cache for you know, this query when the parameter tries value is a small int instead of a tiny int. 
But it's interesting when SQL Server will and will not reuse a simply parameterized uh, plan from cache. So as another final example here, I actually have four queries where they all differ slightly, right? Our first one is just ID equals three. This one has some extra white space between uh, the equal sign and the value. This one has extra white space between the where and uh, the column name. And this one has white space and a comment. So based on everything we saw earlier in this video, these sh shouldn't get uh, reused plans because of all these different you know, white space and comments and everything else. However, you might be surprised that if we run this, and once again, we go look at our execution plan cache statistics. We'll see if we go and scroll over here, they all actually uh, got parameterized. We can see an execution count of four because we had four queries execute and they all were simply parameterized. So SQL Server surprisingly has a little bit more flexibility when it goes through that simple parameterization process. It's able to clean up white spaces and comments and, and realize that you know, different queries are actually the same, even if their texts don't match precisely. So in conclusion, SQL Server is very particular about how it decides whether to reuse a plan from the execution plan cache or not. This video didn't go into every single possible example out there of, you know, when SQL Server won't reuse a plan, but it should give you a pretty good idea of of how particular SQL Server is and how precise you need to be. So thanks for tuning in again this week. I hope you found this useful. I find knowing this uh, actually really beneficial when troubleshooting plans, you know, out of the cache, I need to be aware that if I do accidentally highlight extra spaces or remove some comments or rearrange the code to make it look cleaner, I may not get a cached plan or I, after looking at all these examples, I certainly won't. So be aware of that. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe so you never miss another weekly video and I'll see you next time. Thanks.